All right, um, as you can see, <laughs> again, labyrinth is pretty good definition. Uh, in 1925, Denfeld cost $1.25 million to build. Uh, they spent about 10% of it just here in the auditorium. And when they built the building, they said there's enough, and I got the time, when we did, did the renovation, I was able to tell the architects and the Johnson control people that the architects designed the building not to be a D, but to go up to a fourth or fifth floor. That's part of the reason why third floor had enough room to build up. So they went and looked and said it's just not feasible for what we need. And so that's part of the reason why they went out. But the, the auditorium is, the, I love the architects were very uh, detailed about it and they were very snooty too. I love their final line. Uh, they wrote about the auditorium is bold for acoustical settings. Every classroom gets sunlight at some point of the day. In 1925 they did this. And the auditorium is built with no additions needed nor wanted. <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, they're pretty active about this, aren't they? I mean, that comes out as, you know, about as snotty as you can be in 1925. Um, and so there's, there's a few little hidden gems around here, too. A lot of Ds for Mr. Denfeld. The gargoyles are meant to, uh, to burn out the animal characteristics that prevent humans from aspiring to a higher place. And that was true also in Middle Ages time on churches, uh, courthouses, and schools to get rid of the animal characteristics of human by education or spirituality or a judge will do it for you. So that's, they carried that tradition in here. Uh, also the pipe organ, which is right there, there uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it's almost the anniversary of June the 14th, 1927 they held their first pipe organ concert here. And it was an uh, organ specialist from St. Paul. It was a huge deal. Keep in mind, the deck was not built in 1967. So the Armory downtown and Denfeld were the two largest venues for public entertainment. That's why they built the auditorium on the corner so it wouldn't disrupt uh, or have people traipse through classrooms or hallways. And that's why they put it here. Uh, this auditorium has seen some of the most famous people in America from 1927 to 67. For example, Vice President Nixon spoke here, Ed Sullivan was here, the Ink Spots, Johnny Cash, and numerous concerts were here. Jose Greco. Jose Greco. Um, the pipes would go behind these two pillars, and they were with pipes with water in them at different levels to make the pitch uh, sound uh, better. Also, here's also the story of uh, is there a ghost in Denfeld or not? And it's like, well, somebody, like I said, there, there was nobody killed in here. Nobody fell off of here, which is part of the memo uh, that they all seem to be on. Uh, and so one time at Criterion Kids in 2010, they wanted to spend the night here to try to meet the ghosts. And I said, well, all, all I'll tell you is this. I said, when I asked the Alumni Association, the, the people in the 40s said they never heard of a ghost. 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, nobody heard of a ghost. The 90s heard of it, the 2000s heard of it, and the 2010s heard of it. So I said, all right, it's somewhere in between, 80s and 90s. And there were, I probably talked to six or seven people who said, I was in that auditorium, I'll never be in there alone again. And I said, why is it? Bill Weston, who besides being a principal, was a lawyer, told me up in the echo chamber, he says, I saw something moving and I was in there. I yelled to get out, nobody got out, I went up there and nobody was there. And I thought, okay, he's pretty credible. Um, <laughs> Mark Oberlin, the choir, yeah. <laughs> choir director, he was trying to tell us going to Central that year was going to be a good thing, and of course the Central kids didn't want us up there. The Denfeld kids didn't want to be at the Central kids. So he was getting mad that about their pouting, and he said, it's going to be good, and a piece dislodged and hit him. Oh, geez. And forevermore it was, the ghost is pissed that he was dissing Denfeld. It was a two by four up in the rafters and he heard a noise, looked up and clunk right on the, right on the beak. And uh, Matt, Matt, you had uh, an ex, uh, where was it, up here that you? Huh? 
Matt's shy for the first time. Yeah. Um, for the first time. And, <laughs> I, uh, uh, and when I was practicing for the, the induction of the uh, Hall of Fame, I was in here and alone and whatnot, and so I said, okay, Officer McClure solved this. Isn't that perfect? Uh -huh. He said, you know who the ghost is? It's Doug Bray. Oh, that'd be perfect because Doug was a valedictorian, Mr. Moon and Gold, got a college football scholarship to St. Cloud State, and he graduated in 91, and he died in 90, 94 uh, uh, complications from uh, uh, cancer, blood, blood cancer, maybe a part of leukemia. Anyway, it was sad. And we're like, well, that's perfect because 40s through 80s never heard of a ghost. The 90s, 2000s, and the 10s did. I said, we're just going with that. I said, so it's fine. He loved Dento. So I come in here alone and I'm like, Doug, now remember. <laughs> it's me and you and I like each other. And so I've never had any, any sort of experience in here like that. But uh, another one, a, a girl, the first time I ever heard of it was Molly Mackle, 1994. And she came to my classroom. She said, I saw a ghost in auditorium. I'm not going in there for graduation. And her eyes were like SpongeBob big. <laughs> and I'm thinking, whether there's a ghost or not, she thinks there is. And she is scared. And I thought, boy, that's odd. And an, an, one, another credible story that I found was a custodian uh, said that three, three people have said it. Something happens right here. Right here. Three. So you're not going to move directly? Well, I'm going to have a dog. The custodian uh, who was uh, working here uh, a few years ago said he had his earbuds in, he had the big broom. He was mopping or dusted, and he said, he felt, and he took my arm, because he was too, he's like, too honest to God. He took my arm, and he said, it was like this. And he said, I stopped and took my earbuds out, and like, what the hell fell on me? He said, so I'm looking around, like, where is that thing that fell? He said, there was nothing here. And he said, I took my broom, I left, and he said, I didn't go back in there for two weeks. <laughs> so I said, again, there's somebody who, whether there is or isn't, obviously is not going to be provable, uh, but that's the ghost story, and that's where they originated from and, and whatnot. Now we're going to go, uh, Denny, you, you have a couple well, There of actually was a, one of those uh, Ghostbuster outfits in the early 90s. They spent the night in here, and you can ask Steve Lundberg about this because he was working here at the time, and uh, I don't know what they found. I think they, they came up with uh, noises or whatever, but no uh, visual type things or whatever. But, uh, and then I got from Mark Overland, I don't know who the principal was. Uh, I don't think it was Bill, but... Uh, there was a concert here, the concert ended, everybody's gone home. The principal came back in to get something and he looked and there was somebody sitting right there in that oh. center aisle. And he said, sir, the concert's over, we gotta go. And he turned back that way and when he looked back, there was nobody there. So that was from, well, I got that one from, from Overland or whatever, so. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's just trying to get in, but. <laughs> there was many nights when I was in here at 2 o'clock in the morning I get called out for the furnace went down or whatever. And when I came in, I always went that way. <laughs> I always went underneath yeah. and around. Yeah. But, uh, and if you didn't know, Denny was our building engineer for years, the best building engineer Dental yeah. ever had, actually. <laughs> That's the honest truth. That's not any, any hype, too. That's the honest truth. All right.